Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God in whom we place our trust, we invite your holy presence as we gather as a nation to honor the extraordinary actions above and beyond the call of duty rendered by Staff Sergeant Salvatore Junta, an American soldier, patriot, and hero. Our hearts forever resonate with the noble theme of heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. May our remembrance of Sal's combat actions three years ago in Afghanistan's Korengal Valley inspire all Americans with great pride and humility that we have selfless warriors like Sal living among us today. As we hear the account of his heroic actions on 25 October 2007, may we also remember that all of our armed forces and those who stand in harm's way across the world today. Through the narrative of Sal's courageous actions against the enemy and his selfless devotion to rescue a fallen comrade, may we all recommit ourselves to sacrificial and selfless service for our families and our fellow citizens. Cause our reflection on the holy union forged among soldiers during combat to inspire renewed unity in our own land, especially during times of crisis and conflict. As we celebrate this special day with Sal's wife, Jen, his parents, Stephen and Rosemary, his brother, Mario, his sister, Katie, may we remember in prayer all military families who await the safe return home of their loved ones. And finally, as we pause to remember the many freedoms we enjoy as a nation, let us never to give thanks more than we do right now to those especially who paid the glorious liberty with which we enjoy through their very blood, sweat, and tears. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Please uh, be seated. Uh, on behalf of Michelle and myself, welcome to the White House. And thank you, Chaplain Carver, uh, for that beautiful invocation. Of all the privileges that come with serving as President of the United States, I have none greater uh, than serving as Commander in Chief of the finest military that the world has ever known. And of all the military decorations that a President and a nation can bestow, there is none higher than the Medal of Honor. Now, today is particularly special. Since the end of the Vietnam War, the Medal of Honor has been awarded nine times for conspicuous gallantry in an ongoing or recent conflict. And sadly, our nation has been unable to present this decoration to the recipients themselves because each gave his life, his last full measure of devotion for our country. Indeed, as President, I have presented the Medal of Honor three times, and each time to the families of a fallen hero. Today, therefore, marks the first time in nearly 40 years that the recipient of the Medal of Honor for an ongoing conflict has been able to come to the White House and accept this recognition in person. It is my privilege to present our nation's highest military decoration, the Medal of Honor, to a soldier as humble as he is heroic, Staff Sergeant Salvatore A. Junta. Now, I'm going to go off script here for a second uh, and just say, I really like this guy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I think anybody, you know, we all just get a sense of people and who they are. And when you meet uh, Sal and you meet his family, uh, you are just absolutely convinced that this is uh, what America is all about. Uh, and it just makes you proud. And so uh, this is a joyous occasion for me, uh, something that uh, I have been looking forward to. You know, the Medal of Honor reflects uh, the gratitude of an entire nation. So we are also joined here today by several members of Congress, uh, including both senators and several representatives from Staff Sergeant Junta's home state of Iowa. Uh, we are also joined by leaders from across my administration and the Department of Defense, including uh, the Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, 
uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. Where's Mike? There he is right there. Uh, Army Secretary John McHugh and Chief of Staff of the Army, General George Casey. We are especially honored to be joined by Staff Sergeant Junta's fellow soldiers, his teammates and brothers from Battle Company, second of the 503rd of the 173rd Airborne Brigade, and several members of that rarest of fraternities that now welcomes him into its ranks, the Medal of Honor Society. Please give them a big round of applause. We also welcome the friends and family who made Staff Sergeant Junta into the man that he is, including his lovely wife, Jenny, and his parents, Stephen and Rosemary, uh, as well as his siblings who are here. Uh, it was his mother, after all, who uh, apparently taught him as a young boy in small town Iowa how to remove the screen from his bedroom window <laughs> in case of fire. What she didn't know was that by teaching, teaching Sal how to jump from his bedroom and sneaking off in the dead of night, she was unleashing a future paratrooper uh, who would one day fight in the rugged mountains of Afghanistan 7,000 miles away. Now, during the first of his, tour, uh, his two tours of duty in Afghanistan, Staff Sergeant Junta was forced early on to come to terms with the loss of comrades and friends. And his team leader at the time gave him a piece of advice. You just try, you just got to try to do everything you can uh, when it's your time to do it. You've just got to try to do everything you can when it's your time to do it. Uh, Salvatore Junta's uh, time came on October 25th, 2007. He was a specialist then, uh, just 22 years old. Sal and his platoon were several days into a mission uh, in the Korangal Valley, the most dangerous valley in northeast Afghanistan. The moon was full. The light it cast was enough to travel by without using their night vision goggles. With heavy gear on their backs and air support overhead, they made their way single file down a rocky ridge crest along terrain so steep that sliding was sometimes easier than walking. They hadn't traveled a quarter mile before the silence was shattered. It was an ambush so close that the cracks of the guns and the whiz of the bullets were simultaneous. Tracer fire hammered the ridge at hundreds of rounds per minute. More cell said later than the stars in the sky. The Apache gunships above saw it all, but couldn't engage with the enemy so close to our soldiers. The next platoon heard the shooting, but were too far away to join the fight in time. And the two lead men were hit by enemy fire and knocked down instantly. When the third was struck in the helmet and fell to the ground, Sal charged headlong into the wall of bullets to pull him to safety behind what little cover there was. As he did, Sal was hit twice one round slamming into his body armor, the other shattering a weapon slung across his back. They were pinned down, and two wounded Americans still lay up ahead. So Sal and his comrades regrouped and counterattacked. They threw grena uh, grenades, using the explosions as cover to run forward, shooting at the muzzle flashes still erupting from the trees. Then they did it again and again, throwing grenades charging ahead. Finally, they reached one of their men. He'd been shot twice in the leg, but he had kept returning fire until his gun jammed. As another soldier tended to his wounds, Sal sprinted ahead at every step meeting relentless enemy fire with his own. He crested a hill alone with no cover but the dust kicked up by the storm of bullets still biting into the ground. There he saw a chilling sight the silhouettes of two insurgents carrying the other wounded American away, who happened to be one of Sal's best friends. Sal never broke stride. 
He leapt forward, he took aim, he killed one of the insurgents and wounded the other who ran off. Sal found his friend alive but badly wounded. Sal had saved him from the enemy, now he had to try to save his life. Even as bullets impacted all around him, Sal grabbed his friend by the vest and dragged him to cover. For nearly half an hour, Sal worked to stop the bleeding and help his friend breathe until the medevac arrived to lift the wounded from the ridge. American gunships worked to clear the enemy from the hills. And with the battle over, 1st Platoon picked up their gear and resumed their march through the valley. They continued their mission. It had been as intense and violent a firefight as any soldier will experience. By the time it was finished, every member of 1st Platoon had shrapnel or a bullet hole in their gear. Five were wounded and two gave their lives. Sal's friend, Sergeant Joshua C. Brennan, and the platoon medic, Specialist Hugo V. Mendoza. Now, the parents of Joshua and Hugo uh, are here today. Uh, and I know that there are no words that even three years later can ease the ache in your hearts or repay the debt that America owes to you, but on behalf of a grateful nation, let me express profound thanks to your son's service and their sacrifice. And uh, could uh, the parents of, of Joshua and, and Hugo please uh, stand briefly. mentioned I like this guy, Sal. Uh, and as I found out myself when I first spoke uh, with him on the phone and when we met him in the Oval Office today, uh, he is a low-key guy, a humble guy, uh, and he doesn't seek the limelight. And he'll tell you that he didn't do anything special, that he was just doing his job, that any of his brothers in the unit would do the same thing. In fact, he just lived up to what his team leader instructed him to do years before. You do everything you can. Staff Sergeant Junta, uh, repeatedly and without hesitation, you charged forward through extreme enemy fire, embodying the warrior ethos that says, I will never leave a fallen comrade. Your actions disrupted a devastating ambush before it could claim more lives. Your courage prevented the capture of an American soldier and brought that soldier back to his family. You may believe that you don't deserve this honor, but it was your fellow, fellow soldiers who recommended you for it. In fact, your commander specifically said in his recommendation that you lived up to the standards of the most decorated American soldier of World War II, Audie Murphy, who famously repelled an overwhelming enemy attack by himself for one simple reason. They were killing my friends. That's why Salvatore Junta risked his life for his fellow soldiers, because they would risk their lives for him. That's what fueled his bravery, not just the urgent impulse to have their backs, but the absolute confidence that they had his. One of them, Salas said, uh, uh, of, of these uh, young men that he was with, he said, they are just as much of me as I am. They are just as much of me as I am. So I would ask Sal's team, all of Battle Company who were with him that day, to please stand and be recognized as well.
gentlemen, thank you for your service. We're all in your debt, and I'm proud to be your commander in chief. So, be seated. These are the soldiers of our armed forces, highly trained, battle hardened, each with specialized roles and responsibilities, but all with one thing in common. They volunteered in an era when it's never been more tempting to chase personal ambition or narrow self-interest. They chose the opposite. They felt a tug. They answered a call. They said, I'll go. And for the better part of a decade, they have endured tour after tour in distant and difficult places. They have protected us from danger. They have given others the opportunity to earn a better and more secure life. They are the courageous men and women serving in Afghanistan even as we speak. They keep clear focus on their mission to deny safe haven for terrorists who would attack our country, to break the back of the Taliban insurgency, to build the Afghans' capacity to defend themselves. They possess the steely resolve to see their mission through. They are made of the same strong stuff as the troops in this room, and I am absolutely confident that they will continue to succeed in the missions that we give them in Afghanistan and beyond. After all, our brave servicemen and women and their families have done everything they've been asked to do. They have been everything that we've asked them to be. If I'm a hero, Sal has said, then every man who stands around me Every woman in the military, every person who defends this country is. And he's right. This medal today is a testament to his uncommon valor, but also to the parents and the community that raised him, the military that trained him, and all the men and women who served by his side. All of them deserve our enduring thanks and gratitude. They represent a small fraction of the American population, but they and the families who await their safe return carry far more than their fair share of our burden. They fight halfway around the globe, but they do it in hopes that our children and our grandchildren won't have to. They are the very best part of us. They are our friends, our family, our neighbors, our classmates, our coworkers. They are why our banner still waves, our founding principles still shine, and our country, the United States of America, still stands as a force for good all over the world. So please join me in welcoming Staff Sergeant Salvatore A. Junta for the reading of the citation. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded, in the name of Congress, the Medal of Honor to then Specialist Salvatore A. Junta, United States Army. Specialist Salvatore A. Junta distinguished himself conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty in action with an armed enemy in the Korangal Valley, Afghanistan, on October 25, 2007. While conducting a patrol as team leader with Company B, 2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry Regiment, Specialist Junta and his team were navigating through harsh terrain when they were ambushed by a well-armed and well-coordinated insurgent force. While under heavy enemy fire, Specialist Junta immediately sprinted towards cover and engaged the enemy. Seeing that his squad leader had fallen and believing that he had been injured, Specialist Junta exposed himself to withering enemy fire and raced towards his squad leader, helped him to cover, and administered medical aid. While administering first aid, enemy fire struck Specialist Junta's body armor and his secondary weapon. Without regard to the ongoing fire, Specialist Junta engaged the enemy before prepping and throwing grenades, using the explosions for cover in order to conceal his position. Attempting to reach additional wounded fellow soldiers who were separated from the squad, Specialist Junta and his team encountered a barrage of enemy fire that forced them to the ground. 
The team continued forward, and upon reaching the wounded soldiers, Specialist Junta realized that another soldier was still separated from the element. Specialist Junta then advanced forward on his own initiative. As he crested the top of a hill, he observed two insurgents carrying away an American soldier. He immediately engaged the enemy, killing one and wounding the other. Upon reaching the wounded soldier, he began to provide medical aid as his squad caught up and provided security. Specialist Junta's unwavering courage, selflessness, and decisive leadership while under extreme enemy fire were integral to his platoon's ability to defeat an enemy ambush and recover a fellow American soldier from the enemy. Specialist Salvatore A. Junta's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Company B, 2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry Regiment, and the United States Army. Let us pray. Great and loving God, as we conclude this ceremony, keep us mindful of your call to each of us to devote ourselves, even our very lives, on behalf of others. May Staff Sergeant Sal Junta's courageous and compassionate actions challenge and inspire us all to do the same for our fellow citizens for generations to come. Please give Sal and Jen great wisdom and strength in their new responsibilities and roles that lie before them. May they continue to meet them all with dignity, honor, courage, and humility. May your divine favor and eternal wisdom rest on our president and upon all of the national leaders as they strive together to lead and serve our great country. God bless the members of our armed services, and God bless America. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, let's give Sal one last big round of applause.